Did it start? It is officially started. You can say hello. Hello, everyone. You're going to come open, right? I am coming. Is it working properly? I was a little un unsure there when, when, uh, when things started. So, good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Lord of the Harvest Christian Fellowship's Sunday worship service live cast. Again, due to the corona um, virus situation, everything is a little crazy. And um, so we are taking everything seriously. We are just broadcasting from our home today. Um, my name is Rob. For those of you who may be watching this and, you know, are new to Lord of the Harvest, my name is Rob. I'm one of the pastors. We're broadcasting home from our home today. This is my daughter, Allison. Um, and um, she's going to be leading us in worship, sharing the message. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about Lord of the Harvest, we're a small non-denominational church on the corner of Topher and Shaner in Warren, Michigan, right at the border of Warren and Detroit. We have a vision to be multicultural, multi-socioeconomic, you know, uh, a black and white, Arabic and white, whatever, Asian, Arabic, Hispanic. We have a vision to become one new man in Christ, rich, poor, whatever. So with that, j just, you know, wanted to share that about us as a church and just let you know, this is what we call Palm Sunday today. Um, this is the, the the beginning of the Holy Week as, as believers. Um, culminates in what everybody knows as Easter, the Resurrection Sunday. Um, this, this is the day, though, that Jesus rides into, would have ridden into Jerusalem on a donkey and, you know, the beginning, that Holy Week of the celebration that many of us call Easter, we we and our family call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, so with that, I'm going to just open with this scripture. And this is out of John 12. The large crowd that had, the next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. That's an act of what we call worship, and worship is just praising the Almighty God and Creator. So with that, Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus, the King of all kings, Lord. We, we, we put our lives down before your feet and we just want to lift you up and praise your mighty name lord we thank you lord that all that's going on you are still in control lord you have a plan and a purpose for all of this lord that that we don't understand but lord we submit to your will lord we love you we want to praise you in this moment lord and give you all glory and honor in jesus name Hear our worship. Amen. Amen.
Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you to, for the chance to worship you, Lord, and just hear the praises of our lips, Lord, and hear our hearts, Lord. We want to run over with your love for one another. We want to run over with your love for mankind in this hour, Lord, and just hear that cry of our hearts, Lord, and make it so. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So this is... This is the first time we've actually run a service from anybody's house. Um, if you were watching in the 10 o'clock hour, Wes Kane did Bible study from his house. And we are now doing um, the service here from the Elliott house. Um, this is normally a time in our service where we do what's called communion. Uh, for those of you who don't know what communion is, basically, the last, there's the, the famous uh, paintings, et cetera, et cetera, call out what's called the Last Supper. And in that Last Supper, it's Jesus and his closest disciples together. And he shares some of his last parting words with them before he goes off to pray, become arrested, beaten, acu accused, beaten, ultimately crucified and killed on our behalf and then from there the rest of the story is that he spent three days in the grave and was resurrected with new life to pay for our sins so this is the time where we do communion and if you don't have communion i don't happen to have it nearby me at the moment um, it was kind of an oversight so i apologize um but if you don't happen to have communion basically um you know, the, 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 the meal was the bread and the wine that he used. Um, <laughs> Catherine, that one's on me. I totally forgot to put it together when we were ready. But so that was the bread and the wine that he, he used. And um, so the, go ahead, I'll just grab it. So, thanks. So, um, in Luke 22, it describes the institution of the Lord's Supper. When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks to, to the Lord, he said, take this Divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after he had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So Lord, we take these elements of communion in remembrance of you, in remembrance of your sacrifice for us. We put our lives before you, Lord, and we thank you that you poured your perfect self out for us. And we just ask, Lord, in this hour that you would show our show us our hearts, Lord, and what's out of line with you, Lord, that as we take this, we come into a deeper relationship with you, Lord. 
We share this digitally with our brothers and sisters abroad, a part of our body, a part of the body of Christ, Lord. But we share this with meal in celebration of you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're now at the part of the service, if you will, that um, that uh, someone is going to be sharing a message. Um, that person today is going to be my daughter, Allison. It's an honor to hear your kids and their lives in, in the Lord. And I'm very excited to hear what she has to share. So with that... Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so, Wes Kane shared a message for our Bible study this morning, and it was awesome. He did a great job. Um, and some of the stuff he touched on actually ties really well into what God had on my heart to share today. I actually had an entirely different message prepared to share. Um, I had actually asked Pastor Oz if I could share while I was still in Florida because I knew I would be coming back for a little bit. Um, so I prepared my message in Florida and then came back and lots of things changed and God entirely changed what I wanted to say. So I'm preaching a different message than I had originally planned in a much different way than I had originally planned, but that's okay. Uh, so Wes talked about, um, he talked about suffering this morning and he talked a lot about um, Jacob and Joseph and then Jesus' suffering and how there was purpose in all of it. And uh, he touched on the fact that we don't really suffer well. Um, even though Jesus gave us, Jesus gave us an example to follow. Um, but when it comes to suffering, we have a really hard time and basically it just becomes why is this happening to me, you know? Like, what's going on? What did I do to deserve this? Instead of, God, what is your purpose in this? Um, so with, with everything going on with COVID-19, um, a lot of people, I think, feel that way. Um, I've heard a lot of people criticizing the church either way. If they open their doors, they're wrong. If they close their doors, they're wrong. Um, and just we're in a weird place right now, right? And <clears throat> so what's really been on my heart as far as that goes is that God allowed all of this. Um, he's allowing this to happen. He's, there's really, for the most part, not a way for us to meet together as a church right now. Most churches are not meeting together right now. And God allowed that. And so instead of, um, instead of getting frustrated and instead of that whole, oh, why me question, that whole why, why do we have to close down churches right now? Um, I feel like God is really asking us to look for his purpose in this. And I believe that he does have one. Um, so there was a question that... Uh, just came to my heart while I was praying a little while ago and I felt like God was asking us will you still be my church without the building um and that was a question that it's kind of confusing because when we think of the church usually we think of the building right but that's not what the church is the church is the body of Christ the church is believers all believers in Jesus Christ um so it's it's not about the building, and I think he's challenging us as far as that goes. And a lot of people will say um, that, you know, God calls us to fellowship, and that's true. We are supposed to fellowship, but I think he's calling us to learn some different things. Um, I don't think this is going to be forever. I don't think church is going to be 
the same that it used to be. Um, but I don't think it's going to forever be us just, you know, stuck in our houses watching live streams. But still, God allowed that. So what's his, what's his purpose? What's he trying to show us? Um, so a couple weeks ago, Pastor Oz had said something that stuck out to me. And he was talking about Mary and Martha. And he mentioned like being quarantined at Jesus' feet. And so I'm going to read the story of Mary and Martha really quick. Um, I'll be reading Luke 10, 38 through 42. And it says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus asked me, read your Bible, pray, you know. And that's another big part of this is intercession. Um, there is a lot going on. There's a lot that we can't help with because we're stuck in our homes right now. Be praying for people. Be praying for the people on the front lines and praying for this situation. Um, praying for God's purpose to be revealed in it, but also just ultimately at the end of the day that his name would be glorified. If he chooses to take this away, however he chooses to do this, um, I'm just praying that his name would be glorified. So I'm spending a lot of time in prayer. I'm spending a lot of time reading my Bible, and I think that's something that, you know, we're, a lot of us, I think, are filling up our empty schedules already with new house projects and maybe working in the yard or whatever you might be doing. But I'm just, I think we need to be doing our best. Not that those things are bad, but I think we need to be doing our best to be prioritizing time with God right now, that that should be first. Um, so then Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16 says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that, you, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Um, so I do believe that God's calling us to that deeper personal relationship in this time, but I also think that he's challenging... Um, how we are as an example, um, how we are as a light of the world. Are we really a light in the world? Uh, one of those things that I think is really easy to fall short in, in is social media. Um, so I'm going to read another verse. In Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we're on social media, um, either freaking out at people or posting all the negative stuff about this virus, about the government, people's response to it, when we're just feeding into all of that negativity, I don't think we are being the light that God is calling us to be. Um, <clears throat> In the story of David and Goliath, David was surrounded by negativity, not only from Goliath and the Philistines who were mocking everyone, but from the Israelites, from the people of the Lord. He was surrounded by their negativity. But at the end of the day, he chose to say, my God is bigger than this. My God is bigger than Goliath. And he defeated Goliath at the end of the day. You know, I think we all know that story. Um, God is bigger than this. That verse says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. We have to trust in him. We have to have faith and know that he has a purpose in this and know that he's bigger than this virus. And when that happens, he's going to fill us with that peace and joy and that's going to overflow as hope to others. And that, I think, is a huge way that God is calling us to be a light in this time.
Um, another thing just that was really sticking out to me as I've been praying about this has been gossip. Um, you know, we're all sitting bored alone at home and maybe someone calls you and you get on a conversation about someone else. I, I think God is really trying to deal with the church on gossip overall. Um, James 4.11 says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. Gossip is something that's really easy to slip into, especially when you're bored. And I think that it's really important that we are not doing that right now, that we are not just talking about other people and starting drama that just doesn't need to be there. Um, like I said, it's something that God has just had on my heart and I think he, I think it's something that he has for the church right now. Um, I think that gossip is one of those things that happens a lot and just doesn't really get addressed because it's easy to justify gossip as, oh, I was just worried about that person or, oh, you know, I was just trying to get more information so I could help them. It, no matter what, gossip is not okay. So when you're, if you're talking with someone about someone else, really just, really just like check your heart and see if you have pure intentions with that. Because a lot of times we may convince ourselves that we do, but we really don't. And it's never worth it. Gossip just is not worth it. Um, so next I want to talk about if you live with other people, being a light to those people. Um, I live in a house with six other people right now <laughs> and with three dogs. And you know, we're going to bicker sometimes and we're going to have interesting times. But at the end of the day, am I being an example of who Christ is to them? And this applies whether or not the people in your home are believers or not. Are you being an example of Christ to the people in your home? Are you being a light in your home? I think that's so important. I think this is an awesome opportunity for parents, especially to be examples to their children. Um, if, I think that one of the things that the younger generation struggles with is wanting to read their Bible and understanding a personal relationship with God and what that looks like, what that means. And if parents are being an example of that right now, if you're turning to Jesus, to spending time with God instead of with all of the other things, your kids are going to see that because you're all home, you know? Um, so I, for everyone, this is just an awesome opportunity to be an example to the people that live with you. And then the last thing I have is that I've been asking God every day to put someone on my heart to reach out to. Um, I specifically have been praying for people with depression and people with anxiety and suicidal thoughts people with those mental health issues that they're not going to reach out. Um, I know that because I've been in that place and you just, when you're there, you're not gonna reach out to someone. It, it's not how it works. It's not, I don't know why, I wish I could explain it, I wish I understood it. But when you're depressed, when you're lonely, when you're anxious, or when you're having suicidal thoughts, you are very unlikely to reach out to people. So every single day, I've been asking God to put someone on my heart to reach out to. And I haven't done it every single day. Um, I haven't reached out to everyone. But I really, I really believe this is a time for... We can't have connection in the way that we're used to having it, but we still have so many opportunities to be connecting with people. 
And what we have now that we didn't have before is we have time. You have time to sit there and listen to someone. And maybe they don't want to talk about what they're going through. Maybe they don't want to talk about what's going on in their mind. But you have time to just sit there and not be with someone in person, but be with them and listen to them and pray with them, pray for them. I just, I think that this is something that's really important right now because again, a lot of those people are not going to be reaching out. Um, so those are basically the things that I had to talk about. Just, you know, we have free time, spend it with Jesus and be a light in this time. What does that look like? What does that look like for you individually? And another thing that I've really been doing is asking God what exactly he wants from me in this time. Um, whether that be maybe volunteering. Uh, we do have a food pantry that needs volunteers or I think hospitals. I think you can volunteer at hospitals. Um, if he's calling you to that, then go and do it. Um, if he's not, then be praying about how he wants you individually to be representing the body of Christ right now, because I believe he has a way for each of us to be doing that right now. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all that I had. This closing. That was a great word, Allison. Thank you. And um, Wes, if anyone missed Wes's Bible study, the video is up on the um, it's up on the Facebook page. It is up on the website right now, and it will be on the podcast once we get the podcast up. You just have to click on individual podcast sermons to get to see the video. So you can either listen to it or you can watch the video. I'm just gonna close us in prayer, and then I will. Um, give a few announcements at the end if you want to hear what's going on, what we are doing at Lord of the Harvest right now, and what you can be a part of if you want to. Um, pastors uh, Mike and Jazza, Jan Osminski, who are senior pastors, they've been praying through, in pr praying through Psalm 91 and praying over the body with Psalm, using Psalm 91. So I'm going to read through that and then close in prayer. <clears throat> he who dwells in the place... In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Lord, we just close out the service today. We are so grateful that even though we cannot be present physically with each other, we are present as the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just praise you and thank you. And Lord, show us how to dwell in your secret place. Thank you for your protection. We just pray over this virus. We just ask that you would we would be your church, Lord, that we would we would go where you would have us go. And I don't mean necessarily physically, but our spiritually and um, over the phone or how whatever you would have us do, Lord, we want to open our hearts to you and be who you've called us to be right now. <clears throat> so Lord, we just close this out. We thank you for this time and we praise you in Jesus' name. 
we just want to thank everyone for joining us and uh, I just want to go over a few things that um, are coming up this week um, one if you you know if you're if you would like to tithe still to Lord of the Harvest or support Lord of, Lord of the Harvest financially there are instructions at our website LHCF Warren W A R R E N all one word dot com um, slash support okay so you can go there that's where you can also you can if you know you know people who don't have Facebook they can go there to view um, our videos or find out what's what is going on all the everything that we're gonna announce right now is also on the website and on the Facebook page um, we have a kingdom education Bible study starting on Wednesday this Wednesday April 8th, it's going to be on Zoom. Pastor Adrian Bird will be teaching that, and it will be every other Wednesday. So all you have to do to sign up and get the invitation for that is email Lord of the Harvest. It's lhcf1 at comcast.net. Most Thursdays, we also have a corporate prayer on Zoom, so you are welcome to e um, email the same email address and ask for an invite to that um, if we are not having it it will be on the, the correct dates will be on the website we may not we may be participating in something else this Thursday so again that information will be on the website and also on the Facebook page the Alliance of Warren Evangelicals is holding their Good Friday service on Facebook live on Friday so Normally we go and we are together for that. A lot of the churches in Warren get together, in the city of Warren get together for that. Um, they will be doing it live on Facebook and just search, I think it's Warren Good Friday. I, I believe Catherine is putting the links up so um, you can get the link in the comments section. That's gonna be this Friday, April 10th at 7 p.m. And that's it. Thank you for joining us and have a really blessed week. <laughs> Finishing now.